Don Juan pointed to an area on the face of the slope. Look there fixedly. The sun is almost right. After a long vigil, I asked what I was supposed to be looking for. He made me be quiet with an impatient gesture of his hand. Then suddenly, the whole mountain was lit up. Amazed, I told Don Juan that if I squinted my eyes, I could see the whole mountain as an intricate array of light fibers. Don Juan said I should try to isolate areas of darkness within the field of light fibers, and that right after finding a dark spot, I should open my eyes and check where the spot was on the face of the slope. I was incapable of perceiving any dark areas. I squinted my eyes and then opened them various times. Don Juan drew closer to me and pointed to an area to my right, and then another one right in front of me. I tried to change the position of my body, but Don Juan shook my arm and told me in a severe tone, Keep still and be patient. I again squinted my eyes and once more saw the web of light fibers. I looked at it for a moment and then I opened my eyes wider. At that instant, I heard a faint rumble. It could have easily been explained as a distant sound of a jet plane. And then I saw the whole range of mountains in front of me as an enormous field of tiny dots of light. Then the sunlight grew dim and was suddenly turned off and the mountain became a regular mass of dull gray rock and at the same time it became windy and cold. I wanted to turn around to see if the sun had disappeared behind a cloud but Don Juan held my head and did not let me move. He said that if I turned around, I might catch a glimpse of the entity of the mountains, the ally that was following us. He assured me I didn't have the necessary strength to stand a sight of that nature, and said that the rumble I had heard was the peculiar way in which an ally heralded its presence. He then stood up and announced we were going to start climbing up the side of the slope. He pointed to one of the areas he had isolated as being a spot of darkness. He explained that not doing had allowed him to single out that spot as a possible center of power, or perhaps as a place where power objects might be found. We reached the spot he had in mind after a painful climb. He stood motionless for a moment a few feet in front of me. I tried to come closer to him, but he signaled me with his hand to stop. He seemed to be orientating himself. I could see the back of his head moving as if he were sweeping his eyes up and down the mountain. Then, with sure steps, he led the way to a ledge. He sat down and began to wipe some loose dirt off the ledge with his hand. He dug with his fingers around a small piece of rock that was sticking out. Then he ordered me to dig it out. As soon as I dislodged the piece of rock, he told me to immediately put it inside my shirt because it was a power object that belonged to me. He said he was giving it to me to keep and I should care for it. Don Juan stood up, then headed down and started walking toward the southeast. After a while, we went over a hill, and as we got to the top, I spotted four men coming towards us from the south. I looked at Don Juan. We had never encountered people in our excursions, and I didn't know what to do in a case like that. But he didn't seem to be at all concerned. He kept on walking as if nothing had happened. 